The media has been reporting on this story. They're telling us that BP have bought Tesla superchargers from Tesla. And people think this means that BP have taken over existing Tesla supercharger locations. That's not actually true. Tesla has sold $100 million worth of charging hardware to BP, one of the biggest oil giants in the world. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. So this story has been a little bit misrepresented by some of the media, intentionally or unintentionally, I don't know. But this is a really cool story because it shows you that big oil, they are electrifying. One of the biggest supercharger stations in the world is actually in London. It was a gas station, a Shell gas station, a Shell petrol station. It's now a still a Shell station, but it's electric only. And that said, BP are actually investing probably even more money than Shell are. So BP, they've got a pretty decent fast charging network they're looking at building here in Australia, but they're also doing the same thing in the United States. Their charging network, in fact, is called BP Pulse. And this deal will supply BP with 100 million US dollars of 250 kilowatt Tesla version three superchargers. They're compatible with NAX chargers, so NACS, Tesla, North American Charging Standard Chargers, but also they work with CCS1 connectors as well. BP actually just announced this within the last 24 hours. It's a major agreement with Tesla, and it means the BP is saying, uh, well, Tesla's chargers work better, they're more reliable, and they're actually cheaper than the competition. These aren't just any chargers, by the way. They're version three chargers, but they're not Tesla's version four chargers, which are actually significantly better than these. Tesla seems to be selling their old hardware to BP, which is, I don't know, I mean, a good thing, bad thing. Maybe BP got a good deal. Possibly they got a good deal. Part It could be part of the reason. But an order for 100 million US dollars worth of just the charging hardware itself, this is not including installation, just hardware. That's a really big order. This is the first time that Tesla's fast chargers have ever been purchased for deployment on an independent EV charging network. Now, Tesla has done this sort of thing for, for governments and it's done this sort of thing in Texas, built out chargers there, but not for an independent charging network. So BP the first, Will this open the floodgates? So Ford, of course, opened the floodgates for the North American charging standard or NAX chargers to become commonplace for all EVs made in the United States. Will this do a similar thing for Tesla actual supercharger hardware? It possibly could. The reason I say this is because reportedly it costs Tesla about 80% about less to manufacture their superchargers versus what it costs the competition. That probably would make sense if more companies did this. Now, there's another big benefit here, and that is the reliability. Your cost to repair your superchargers will be much lower. Of course, Tesla's chargers simply work a lot longer. That's an established fact, and that doesn't mean that I'm a Tesla fanboy saying that. It's just reality. Anyway, Rebecca Tanucci, who's Tesla's Senior Director of Charging Infrastructure, said this. At Tesla, we're driven to enable great charging experiences for all EV owners. Selling our fast charging hardware is a new step for us. And while we're looking to expand in support of our mission to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy, we appreciate BP's partnership in this area. It's the right step towards a more sustainable future. I agree with this. If this makes it cheaper for other charging networks to build out their charging network, I'm all for it. Now, Tesla's obviously going to make a profit at the same time, but it's a win-win as far as I'm concerned. And I think, you know, even though BP is clearly still a big oil company and I doubt they plan on giving up any of that, the oil sales, it's still a trend in the right direction. The BP Pulse network, which previously focused on the European market, but now is expanding in the United States and Australia, includes public fast charging stations, as well as supporting EV fleet customers by deploying charges at their private depots. So it's possible that in the future, this will be commonplace at say trucking stations, um, at factories where people have machinery and cars and EVs and fleets of EVs and fleets of trucks. But BP 
along with Tesla, will actually have another business avenue here, which is to install chargers at their businesses. And that's partly what BP are doing. This rollout will begin in 2024. As you can see, the charging dispensers look like they could even be Tesla V4 superchargers. But what we've heard is they have 250 kilowatt charging speed. So it seems more likely that they are version threes, but it's possible they are version four. BP intends to install and operate Tesla's charging hardware on its own and use its in-house intelligent charge management software. It's yet to be seen how well that'll work. It'll be interesting to see what customers' responses are to BP's uh, software. It's called Omega, and they say it will oversee the entire charging process for EV fleets, providing a comprehensive solution for its fleet customers. When it comes to the chargers, they will have an output of 250 kilowatts, the same as current V3 superchargers. Reportedly, V4 can do 350 kilowatt, um, but that may not actually happen until the Cybertruck is released. So currently they're only doing 250, but I've heard they're capable of 350. These chargers, by the way, V4 chargers now as well, are equipped with Tesla's Magic Dock, which is an integrated CCS1 adapter. So they're compatible with both North American charging standard NACs and combined charging system CCS1 chargers. So at this point, you can see here that V4 chargers, for one, have a credit card reader display and a longer cable. So big advantage here, the longer cable means that it works better for all different kinds of vehicles. Uh, vehicles could be trucks, utes, etc. One thing I think is worth considering here, right? How, ma how much money can Tesla make by selling chargers to the competition? I don't think Tesla is too worried about the competition, to be honest, but how much money can it make? This is a hundred million US dollar deal. I mean, it's possible that it has a profit margin of say 30% here. That's $30 million. It's not heaps of money, but it could this potentially become a big business for Tesla worldwide? I think it's realistic. According to BP, the chargers support the use of plug and charge protocol, which simplifies and automates payments to further improve user experience. And speaking of improvements to user experience, Google Maps has just been updated again in multiple locations around the world for improved recognition and access to charging locations. So we're continuing to see new changes made to Google Maps and Apple Maps as well, but primarily Google Maps on integrating EV networks into the system, which I think is a really good thing. Locations, Tesla's hardware will be installed, said BP. The BP family of brands, including Travel Centers of America, Thornton's, AMPM, and Amoco, as well as at BP Pulse's large scale Giga Hub, charging sites in major metropolitan areas and at third party locations, such as Hertz locations, as part of previously announced collaborations. So you can see there, BP are planning on installing these at many different locations, metropolitan areas, GigaHub charging sites, uh, businesses, um, third party locations, just all kinds of places. The company revealed that the first installation sites have been identified in Houston, Phoenix, Los Angeles, Chicago, and Washington, DC. BP announced in February, 2023, it wants to invest $1 billion in its American EV charging infrastructure by 2030, including 500 million in the next two years. That's a lot of money they plan to invest in the next 200 years, 500 million. You can imagine how many charges that would be built as a result of that massive investment. Today, BP Pulse has more than 27,000 charging points Mostly AC though, unfortunately. So mostly they're slow chargers. It's only got a fraction of that when it comes to fast chargers. Its goal though is to have more than 100,000 worldwide by 2030. This will be a huge, huge benefit to the EV revolution. I think EV adoption it will speed up as a result in a small part to BP's efforts. So kudos to them. Great news from both companies. I think great news from BP and from Tesla. I'm excited to see all these charges that are going to be built over the next five to 10 years. There's going to be so many. It's, it's going to be an amazing time. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.